Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Andrew. Hello, Catherine. How well, are you? I'm good. Let's start the podcast. Yes. Hello. Welcome to episode 42 Two. Mm. of Trusty Hogs. Today, Helen Bauer is where? She's going to sort out her sty. How is this happening? I don't know. This is her fourth, fifth sty incident since the podcast started. And worryingly now, she assumes that every time she has a sty, it's because she was wanking, didn't wa- wipe her hand enough. Yeah. Ugh. Because washing apparently wasn't an option, and then put it to her eye. Yeah, I mean, there's an interesting thing that she knows the process that's led to the sty. Yeah, but she will not change her behaviours. No, she no. won't. Absolutely no learning involved. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what? And then every time we have to see the sty, because she sends so many pictures of her sty up close. To I enjoyed us. her eye patch picture though. <laughs> I did not enjoy her eye patch. I'll put picture. that on the socials. Okay, <laughs> I guess you could. It's yeah. just like a disgust. Like she makes pirates seem clean. How is that possible? <laughs> like she's like. A if s- Helen came in with scurvy i wouldn't be surprised oh no or gout all yeah. plausible all plausible i'd be like yeah sure that fits yeah, i out. just don't understand how one woman gets so many styes mm. but here we are so yeah. you're you are standing in em is on the production desk yes. everything's gonna be okay probable that both of us well, definitely me will get to finish sentences today so that's exciting <laughs> yeah it'll be quite a, like a Back and forth? Is huh? that what you call it? A conversation? How about a huh? <laughs> Will the last sentence be a logical escalation of the one before us? We're talking sequiturs. No, we're talking stop responses. It. <laughs> it's all sorts going on. <laughs> well, welcome to this one time edition of Trusty Hogs, <laughs> where the conversation may indeed make sense. Through the fog, step forth the trusty hogs. Yeah. Maybe they won't, and that's your problem. They'll have guests and Andrew White on the tech. Oh, it's Helen and Catherine as the trusty hogs. Trust the trusty hogs, or maybe not. Later, we have an amazing guest as well. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited she's going to be here. Are we going to say it together? Oh, you can say it. Oh, the fantastic Rachel Fairburn. Yes. yes. Co- like comedy and podcast queen. Indeed. I'm so excited. It's very thrilling. Let's talk about you, Andrew, because you're never in the hot seat. No, it's nice to be back in the... Here you are. You look yeah. cute in your denim jacket. Thank you. Loving this for you. You got cute little earrings on. Mm-hmm. Questionable earrings. Here's Questionable. My... They're cute. Mm-hmm. I love the like four-year-old dresses up as a princess vibe for you. Yeah. But I wonder how good for your ears they are. Uh, they are properly bought, like they're they're like they were like vintage from a like proper shop. No, stop it. Genuinely, <laughs> I know they weren't like mega expensive. They were only like twenty two quid, but um. But they're not like clip on plastic. No, they're they've they've got, all they've got a backing. Yeah. Oh my god, who was the woman who was wearing those till her death? I assume. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just kind of I go around open casket events and see yeah, what I get, you know, <laughs> makes sense <laughs> yeah. based on everything I've ever seen you wear. Do you know what though? Because I the only earrings I had before were the studs that I got when I had my ears pierced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I realized I've got these now and that this is too showy for day to day. So I need a, like a day to day. You do need a day to day alternative. What about the studs that you originally got pierced with? I lost the back of them. So oh, for, you can use yeah. these backings. You know, you don't have to keep them with their friends. Oh, but it's, it's like a twist on a little sort of. Oh, screw- you, okay. Yeah, I'm screwed. Yeah. You, well, mm. indeed. Yeah. Well, not as the case may be. Um, speaking of, mm-hmm. are you still dating that boy? <laughs> um. <laughs> He, he ghosted me. Stop it. No, he didn't. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, ghost at number five? Six, no, seven, eight. What number Who were we knows? on? I've lost okay. count at this point. I've just got a whole fucking haunting behind me. I hate that I believed you so readily. I know. it's. I, but to be fair, track record. It's my track record. It does record. seem more implausible that this is going well, but is it? It is going well. well I'm, I wow. S- does he listen to the podcast? He listened to the extras where I talked about him because he wanted to hear it. And how did he feel about it? He thought it was great. He okay, really enjoyed it. Although okay. in that podcast, I also talked about my moose knuckle, mm. um, which now is is a running joke. Well, that is harrowing. I'm so yeah. sorry to hear it. Okay. So what's happening? What date are we on? Um, date six is tomorrow. Date six. Date six. Oh, so cute. Yeah. Men, gay men work at a much slower pace than lesbians, even mm. though you are a very commercial gay man. Yes. Oh, we all would, in. We would be on date like... 74 by now, Em? <laughs> yeah, like how many weeks have you known this person? Um, month and a half. Oh, please, six days! <laughs> em, em, you should see Em's face. Em was like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> if you haven't discussed children by now, what are you even doing? That's crazy. So six mm-hmm. dates over a month and a half. Yeah. Where's the date? Uh, we're going to see Thor tomorrow. The movie? The movie Thor, yes. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Why? 
he wants to see it. I want to see it. We're going to go see it. I've got huh. Odeon Limitless. It's like very cheap. It's nice. What? Nice little Why thing. are you old romantic you? <laughs> well, as a matter of convenience and he it's suggested cheap. It. He suggested it. He was like, you've got Odeon Limitless, right? Let's just go to the cinema. Uh, do you worry he's using you for your Odeon Limitless card? Oh my God. Can you imagine? <laughs> yes, oh, I like can. I cancel my Limitless and he disappeared. <laughs> he's no longer a student. He's, he's um. My apologies. Yeah. He no longer stood. He no longer stood. no. Okay. Very impressive. Great. Well, well done. Good luck. Hope it goes well. Thank are you, you having sex now? Um... Depends on your definitions. Well, I'm not a 50 year old straight man, so you can go ahead and assume I'll define it as you define it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Congratulations! <laughs> so exciting! Uh, I bet you're wishing that Helen was here now. Um, I know, because it would be so much more invasive. Oh, you think she'd be more invasive? That's true. She would have asked, what exactly have you done? And I will decide whether or yeah, not yeah. it's fucking... Actually, that's, I'll be mm. Helen. What have you been doing, Andrew? <laughs> I think the exact phrase... L- <laughs> licking hand stuff, touch stuff, bum stuff, mouth stuff, ear stuff, <laughs> foot stuff, which stuff? And the phrase she normally uses is, has he split you in half yet? Oh, Jesus split, yeah. Christ! <laughs> But she always assumes that I'm the splitty rather than the splitter, which is... Well, um, I mean, is that wrong? Um, I'm, I'm versatile. Oh, nice. I, I wish I hadn't asked. The thing is, I can't be as invasive as her because I don't ultimately <laughs> want to know. And that yeah. is the difficulty. I'm like, tell, don't tell me. I actually, yeah. I don't I don't know. Well, that's sweet. I'm, congratulations. I'm so Thank pleased. You. Thank How you exciting. Much. How are you? What have you been up to? What have I been up to, Andrew? Pride. We had Pride. Yeah. Did you, go, you went to your first Pride. You Sorry, I know it pride. came to me and I circled back, but you mm. went to your first Pride. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What did you learn? Did you love it? Oh, it was great. I learned I learned so... I didn't actually learn that much. No, I just obviously. Enjoyed, enjoyed, I had a lovely time. Did you have time. a nice day? Did you see nice. all the pups? I, did, I saw some pups. I saw the um, LGBT conservatives who were... No, stop. Who booed the whole way around. Of course the they were. Of, they were? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Were the LGBT police there also? No, I didn't see that. Okay, they also usually get booed. Oh, okay, I, I yeah. can understand that. I, I, me too. Mm. Um, But also... I saw Keir Starmer. Nice. That was the only, was the only <laughs> I, celebrity I, I, I saw. I was going to try to be like, no, I'm not judging the police. I, I physically couldn't make myself do it. Um, so, <laughs> no, uh, you saw Keir Starmer. Yeah. Did he get booed? Uh, he didn't get booed, no. Interesting. But I think because he was right next to Angela Rayner, who was mm. serving a fit. And, uh, was she? Yeah, she looked great. She had Yes. Cute, it was great. Um, but she, What was she wearing? Tell me everything. It was like, a, it was very colourful. She had these kind of cute, like pink kind of pump sort of things. Yes, Angela. And um, I don't think Serve anyone wanted a boo here. For, for fear that it might accidentally ricochet Rub off. onto <laughs> Angela Rayner. <Yeah. laughs> that's fair. That's mm. fair. Did you go to Trans Pride? No, unfortunately, I missed it. But um, you went. Well, how was it, it? I went briefly. It was gorgeous and glorious and great and comfortable and um, also incredibly frustrating that it mm. wasn't in the news anywhere. Yeah. It like, just... there were 30,000 people there. Mm-hmm. Where was that coverage? I think it's uh, sort of the opposite of pride in a way and that it's like not all commercialized and yeah it's yeah just, it's just joyful cons- i guess it's just solidarity yeah rather than um commercialism goodness me no i know it was so strange just at pride pride not pride pride you know what i mean the the big london parade yeah where it was just like oh there's here's like uh, a massive hiv charity that's been fighting for years and here's a fracking company yeah <laughs> they love yeah. oil and gay i know it's so good They'll really sell strange. oil to anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally. It's, yeah, it's weird. Um, But yeah. I will say, though, some of those floats, they needed to coordinate with each other their playlists. I think we had oh, about yeah. four express yourselves in a row once. Yeah. I would t- it was too much. You're so right, actually. That's mm-hmm. the real issue of Pride. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's all streamline our playlist, guys. Come on. Yeah, Come on. Coordinate. Um, coordinate, please. Uh, yeah. So uh, also, um, because Alan isn't here mm-hmm. uh, and we don't have to explain things like... um. Uh, you know what did she ask about last time? Stonewall. 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 <laughs> I, know what Stonewall like, was. I literally heard myself saying, then I was like, no, surely she couldn't have asked. She did ask about Stonewall. <laughs> What's okay? So that means that we can um get into the real business of we've been gifted something. We have. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Uh, uh, and <laughs> Helen's gonna be raging, but I'm so happy. So Helen talked on this podcast about. Flapjacks. Flapjacks. Mm-hmm. Did she bring us any flapjacks, Andrew? No, she no, never she didn't bring us any flapjacks. No. She talked a lot about the flapjacks mm-hmm. that she had and how many the multitudinous ones she had left over and how she was anxious. Sunil might eat one while she was out of the house. Was yeah. that the story? She yeah. had piles, but she didn't bring us any. She was like um sort of like a, a kind of 
Lord of the Rings dragon sitting yeah. in a pile of, yes, of exactly. flapjacks. Yeah. So the flapjackery mm-hmm. of which she spoke have sent us flapjacks. No, I think this is, I, you know what, annoying, it didn't come with a letter. I think it's from an actual, um, a listener rather than the company uh, itself. But I have to... We'll have oh, to... wait, okay, okay, hang on. So maybe maybe a listener went to the flapjackery? Yeah, maybe, and sent us Did this. you hear the panic in my voice where I was like, wait a second, the, fla- the, the person didn't make them in their own home, did they? No, no, this is, this is from the flapjack. <laughs> should I, should I get the package? Should I bring the package on <laughs> to... Needs health and safety world. <laughs> <laughs> it was sent direct from the company, but I don't know whether it's been sent Who sent by this us person? these mystery flapjacks? But the point is that Helen doesn't want us to eat any while she's not here, so I do intend to eat several while she's not here. Do you want to open it? Because it might have a note. Yes, on it. I'd love to. So, um, I, my, I have a guess, but let's not guess until we've Hashtag opened it. gifted. We never get... Well, that's not, a, that's not something not we true, get so yeah. many gifts. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you for your, all, this all is your so gifts. Nice. Is this good podcasting? Somebody else listening to me open a... That's a big jack. big genre, isn't it? Um, box open. It's ASMR. Hold it right up Ooh. to the... Ooh, listen to that crinkle. <laughs> is this what you want? That was quite satisfying, actually. I wish I had the headphones on. One second. Oh, my goodness. Tap, 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 tap. We're opening the flapjacks, and it's entirely out of vindictive urges to dis- displease Helen Bauer. Oh yeah, <laughs> whilst you're opening that, should I should I read what Helen put in the in the WhatsApp group? Please do. Okay, so Helen said, um, while well, she's off to get her style. Oh God, there it is again. I've seen it again. No, Sorry. it's so um, bad. Please, you have to pretend the flapjacks don't exist until next week. <laughs> it's the I'm right thing to them. do. You know in your hearts. Um, oh don't eat the flapjacks. Oh, I can play a voice note actually. Oh, she why said, don't we record her one? Oh my god, just thought as well. Please, 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 don't eat the flapjacks until the second episode because that's not fair on Helen. <laughs> Moo, <Moo-hoo, laughs> poor, 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 poor Helen. She's only four, and there's only <laughs> going to be four flapjacks left. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't. Are you going to see Sunila t- anytime soon? Oh man, we should get Sunil some flapjacks. We should give Sunil one of that's our such flapjacks. That's a good idea. Yeah. We should let Sunil know. I bet the person sent them, and the note's going to say like only for Helen and all that. For yeah. fuck's sake. <laughs> There we go. Ooh, is there ooh, a is there a note? <gasps> there is. Oh my god. Oh my god, there is. We hope you enjoy your box of gluten-free flapjacks. Yes, I can eat them. Great. This is so good. Thanks for the continued entertainment. You guys are amazing. Have a great day. Amy, a fellow hog. Amy, A-M-I-E. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much, Amy. This is so nice. This is so nice. Oh, we've got one cherry bakewell flapjack, mm-hmm. one clotted cream. Budge flapjack, one raspberry and white chocolate, one chocolate orange. I'm having the chocolate orange. Okay. One lemon drizzle, one salted caramel brownie flapjack. That also sounds amazing, actually. Goodness me. Thank you, Amy. What a joy. Yeah, thank you so much, Amy. Really Which one that. do you think? Uh, um, do, you, uh, do you, I send all of the hogs? And anyone messages us to send us something, I just give them my parents' address. And my my mum called me. He goes, all these couriers, they keep turning up and they keep asking me, am I the trusty <laughs> So I go like, are, are you trusty, huh? I didn't know that we were getting so many gifts. Well, only like... Um, Andrew? <laughs> that's interesting. I've brought in everything that's ever been sent sure, to us, Andrew, I promise. No, no, th- honestly, I know. also I grew those herbs that Patreon Oh, did you? Us. Yeah, and nice. they look amazing. This looks as... Well, I mean, I did. This climbed looks great. It. Yeah, do you want to hold so, it up to the camera? This looks so... There's so many of them. We're really going to have to try if we want to eat these before Helen yeah. gets her hands on them. Look at that. Mic oh, sorry, yeah. So look at that. That's so, I'm yeah. really bad at this. <gasps> Lovely. Go check out um the, the video feed. Nom, nom, nom. Oh, now I really, really want to eat one, but I'm going to wait till the break because I'll while we are trying uh, yeah, to we can't, a... we can't chew into the mic. No, this That's is... a very Helen move. To yeah, you. you're yeah. <laughs> right. I'm so excited. I am, however, going to literally stake claim. Mm-hmm. to t- This is such bad podcasting. What? I'm taking the... Oh, they're individually wrapped. That's perfect. And I'm taking a chocolate orange. Nice. Because I, I just, I'm not going to have this debate with her when she we gets could, here. Is there individually wrapped? We could take them all out. Put them, put something else back in them. Oh my God, yes. And have Helen open them or next Or just episode. put them empty. Just put them empty. Yeah. Oh my God, yes, this is amazing. This is so great. I am going to take that as well. Okay. Okay. She's Lovely. Anyway. Uh, okay. Can you send, me a, can you send Helen done. a picture of this? Yeah. Oh, sure. uh, it's me holding the flapjacks ready to eat. Okay. <laughs> Hang on, I, I feel like um, Helen, there's only four in the packet and I'm eating these three as a sandwich okay uh, oh that's a good one thank yeah. you thank you you're very welcome Amy thank you so much this is like the you. jewel gift of like well your generosity is so sweet we get to eat these flapjacks mm-hmm. and it's going to annoy Helen so much truly a gift a real, a real triple threat the, the gift that keeps on giving gift. I am. Um, oh, I do have news. I failed oh. my driving test. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. I am. Um, 
I, I will be honest. I, I knew I'd failed. I had a really good drive, except for this very obvious fail. What happened? Well, I was driving around a very large roundabout in Mill Hill. And um, it's like a four lane. All right. Three yeah. Lane. yeah. So three lane. Very big. And um, I was supposed to take the third exit. So I went into the inside lane, as you do when you're going past the 12 o'clock barometer on the old roundabout. I don't know if anybody else is going by these rules. Absolutely. I, no. Okay. I have no idea. I went into the lane. I counted the first exit. Lovely. I counted the second exit. Lovely. I check my mirrors. I look left. I look. I indicate I move into the next lane. Great. Now, then a car pulls up in the third lane beside me. Mm-hmm. And I've indicated already, so I'm told it. In, and I'm like, and I am, it turns out, allowed to go left still. They just merge. Yeah. But it didn't feel right to me. I was like, surely I can't. That seems crazy. There's an entire line of traffic to my left. How mm. can I go left? I should have gone left. Mm-hmm. But because I, if I had not turned on my indicator, mm. it wouldn't have been a fault. But, but because I misled yeah, traffic. Yeah. Misled traffic. Wow. <sighs> I can't believe you lied to those cars. Like I know, that. I know. Dare and you? then I only had four like minor faults, and you're allowed to have sixteen. Mm. It was. I think after that, I just got stressed. But you know what's so frustrating is, I don't. I hate failing, obviously, mm. but I know that most people don't pass on their first time. So that was like fine. What I didn't realize was a how nervous I'd be. Mm. It's a really stressful. Did you pass your first time? No. Okay, that's reassuring. I caught up an ambulance. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. Well, I thought I was doing practically what was best but um to the book i was it was bad yeah i hear you Mm -hmm. but the thing i didn't anticipate was how horrendous it would be to have a man is heat wave Mm -hmm. man in tiny shorts and high vis explain to me a mistake i was present for yeah it's it's horrible it's like yeah no chris i know babe i was there yeah yeah and he's like and he also did that thing of like and I'm afraid to say, I was like, I know, you don't like, obviously, I just like, just fucking rip the plaster off. We don't need to do this whole, oh, it was just really annoying. Yeah. He was an Arsenal fan. It was a nightmare. Oh, it was a nightmare. Frustrating. Very it was frustrating. really hellish, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so that part I hated. Did, it, did, did you, at least it wasn't the sort of, what do you think you did wrong or what do you, th- that oh, sort of no, like Oh, no, that's questioning. really vile. Yeah. That's really that's vile. That's what happened with my, he's really? like, he's like, where do you think you went wrong? <gasps> and I said, was it when I drove in front of the ambulance that had its lights <laughs> on? And he went, yes. <laughs> Well, uh, this guy went, I'm really sorry to say, and I was like, oh, yeah, I know. I was on the roundabout, too. And he was like, <laughs> did you say that to Yeah. Him? And he said, sorry to say that it is a fail. And yes, it is. I'm afraid it is because of the roundabout. And I was like, yeah, yeah, no, I know. I should have gone left or else not indicated. And he was like, yes, actually, you should have gone left. What happened instead was that you missed the driver. I was like, I just said that quick. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, so, <laughs> so annoying. One of the most frustrating things is somebody explaining to you. Your oh. mistake when you already, you already know. I was there. Like, let me fix this. I was there. I you now. Yeah. And also, like, the wait. You know the current wait for a retest at the moment is five months. I'll figure it out. Like, I have a lot of time to ponder my fucking crime. Like, Jesus. Oh, my God. I. So I wasn't chill. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, okay, okay. I mean, I'm glad that I wasn't, like, 18 because I would have probably wailed. But um, what I did then on the way home, because, you know, they're not insured to let you drive home. So you have to, yeah. Uh, sit there like a teenager mm-hmm. uh, is just text everyone I knew had failed the first time yeah and that made me feel a lot better good um but yeah it was bad mm-hmm. I also thought like the whole time did I tell you that like I the in my head I've been driving learning to drive and like my even my driving instructor will remind me of this when I'm having a bad day of like I'm always driving to impress my dad Aww. so tragic but like he, I want to be like I can drive you from the airport to my flat and like I just really like I know he'd be so proud of me if I passed and he's the person who like was encouraging me to do it and I was like he is gonna be devastated I failed no didn't even reply oh <laughs> <laughs> it means nothing to him <laughs> I was like I, I was expecting a call nothing nothing the man doesn't care which is actually better and less pressure but I was just like oh I've just created this fiction in my head yeah that's so funny when I when I impeded that medical emergency I, I... <laughs> <laughs> I had taken it was during um school lessons so I took time off school <gasps> so I was like I said to everyone like I'm just uh, I'm not in the next period I'm taking my driving test no! and I had to come back and everyone was like how did you do and I was like oh, never mind no I'll go again <laughs> no <laughs> excruciating no I will fully admit to having pretended to have passed it to a Uber driver yesterday why would you, why would you talk- okay let me just explain. <laughs> He was talking about how much he loves cars. We were talking about engines. Mm-hmm. I like cars. 
that's fine. We were talking about Formula One. We were talking about a specific type of classic car. We were talking about how he learned, to, he started to drive and was first pulled over when he was 14 because he used to restart his own, his brother's car. All that stuff. We were talking, blah, blah, blah. And then he was like, do you drive? And I just couldn't. I couldn't. No, I was not like, after all that car I couldn't. Car. I couldn't be like, I failed yesterday. So I just be like, yes, I've just learned and passed. I d- I, why? I didn't need to say. I just just said, yeah, because I do drive. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I just that learned was- and passed. And I, I turned left at this roundabout. It was really good. I did yeah. well. <laughs> I was just like, why am I lying to this man? He doesn't know me or give a shit. Mm. And honestly, it didn't make me feel the kind of good I thought it would because it was false. It was a falsehood. Because there is that thing, like, um, <sighs> there's this like, psycholo- psychology thing. Like, if you imagine succeeding, it releases, not the same, but dopamine mm-hmm. in a level that... that no, I was just, I was awash with shame. Yeah. It's, awash. It's nice that you've reprogrammed your brain to... Wait, so you shouldn't imagine success? Well, no, I, I can't. I, 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 I skipped through this video about... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to feel inspired, but I couldn't fucking even watch them. <laughs> you know, I know, because I've watched... These videos have, like, cool titles and, like... This whole, and then they're, like, 40 minutes long, and I'm like, I oh, just... I know, never mind. I'll just skip through the chapters. What was the general gist of the video that you were trying to watch? Um, it was about uh, what you need to do to succeed. And he, this guy was saying... If you picture success, it, you can get complacent. Or, and then he was like, but Ooh. you've got to do this thing to not do it. He called it like, I can't remember what he called it. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, it was, it was I just I scrolled away. No, but that's and, fascinating because actually yeah, the, everything else it. tells you the opposite, right? Which is like, mm. you have to imagine yourself Re- succeeding. Manifest it, yeah. 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 That's interesting. But, that's like the yeah. Catholic shame way of teaching. It's like, if you don't do this, you're a bad person, you'll fail and you'll die forever. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, I guess that has driven me. Maybe I should just trust that instinct. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I, w- I wish I'd come more prepared because I think that could be quite an interesting point and I, I didn't watch that video yet. Yeah, no, this would be a really good chat if you I had know the, what the problem was, was I imagined, <laughs> I imagined finishing the video and I thought, oh, well, I finished it now and I scrolled away. This is... <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Okay, this is the most like Helen you've been on this podcast. Where you're like, <laughs> I almost... No, 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 no. No. Um, hey, here's a thought. How about we never tell Helen I failed my test and we just tell her I passed? Yeah, it's fantastic. Great. Cool. Great. Everyone, if you're listening and you see Helen, I passed my driving test. Okay? Yeah. Are we clear? Oh, imagine if she comes in, though, with little pee plates for you. She wouldn't do that. Mm, no, that is quite thoughtful, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. She might give me, like, a fridge magnet of a car. That would be nice. I, I, It'll I'm be fine. horrible. Yeah, that was very unfair, actually. Ka- Helen's very thoughtful. She She's incredibly gets thoughtful. Yeah. She's incredibly thoughtful. And actually, I'd never say that to her face, but she really puts effort into her friendships yeah, in a beautiful really way. Sweet. Yeah. But still, lot. we must lie to her. Yes. Okay? Everyone clear? M. What did I do? Uh, thank you, M. Congratulations, Good. Oh my God, thank you so much. Yeah. It's so nice. That's why I get extra flapjacks. Because you yes. passed. <laughs> the, yeah. Great. Nice. Great. Perfect. I'm so pleased. We honestly, with this lie is going to happen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. I'll keep it up. Um, what if Helen asked for a lift to a gig? Oh, I would never have her in my car, regardless. Oh, that's fine. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Which is, <laughs> this, this is foolproof. No, I, I love her so much, but no. Mm-hmm. No. Every time she comes to my house, she saves up a big poo. <laughs> When we were doing Gigglers, did she, did she save up a big poo every week? Pretty much. Wow. Yeah. She didn't even say a prayer and light a candle. I'd have to send her back in there and light a candle. I'd be like, go back in and put and finger the reeds. Finger the reeds? Sorry, what? You know the like, you know the way when you have a diffuser and you have to... Oh, yeah. right. Okay, yeah. Finger the reeds. Light the candle. Yeah. Finger that the makes reeds. more sense. Yeah. But a little bit we had when she always shat. So no. Uh, she won't be... Uh, not that I think she'd shit in my car, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's risk, is it? I mean, I guess it's not a risk until I actually pass my driving test and then we'll find out. But yeah, okay. uh, real shame because I've actually entered three competitions to win a car. So I think one of those is going to come off pretty soon. So then I'm going to have to be able to drive. Um, yeah, feeling pretty lucky about those. What kind of cars? Pretty much exclusively Vauxhalls. That's all that anybody wants to give away for free. All oh, right. You understand, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd take a free Vauxhall off of course, over no car yeah. for sure. I entered one of those million pound house drawers once. Oh my God, me too. I was yeah. so genuinely sure I was going to win. I me too. I took the virtual tour so many times during lockdown. I was ready to move to Fulham. It wasn't the postcard I was w- w- most wanting, but I was ready. I was prepared. For a three million pound house. Yes. I, looked, I cannot tell you how much I can even still look directly at the photo of the winner. Mm-hmm. I fully committed to that that version of my life in such a way. There was a there was a wine fridge. 
Oh, I'm not ready to talk about it. So I'm sorry for bringing that up. Yeah, no, it's actually pretty cruel of you. Yeah, should we, should, should we move on and, and introduce our guest and forget our, our past failures? I guess Sorry, so. I shouldn't say What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, excuse no, me, that's... what? I thought, did, how many times did you take it to, before I you passed? take two, yeah. Okay, just the two? The two, yeah. Okay, I really want to pass on the second time. God, I hope I do. I believe in you. Thank you so much. My it's not a major fault, really. I'm um, not. It's a. Major it is a major fault. fault. No, it's a major. Fault. You but can't like, be going the wrong somebody, way on roundabout. If somebody who had passed their test done that, nobody would care or bat an eyelid. Oh yeah, but like for the that's the entire process of learning to drive is watching everyone else break the rules of the road mm-hmm. while you go 20 miles an hour and people beef you because you're going 20 miles an hour in a 20 mile. Like that's the entire fucking thing, isn't yeah. it? Is being like, oh, so we can just. It was oh fine, cool, cool, good to know. Um, sidebar before we bring on our guest. Mm-hmm. Um, is she doing an Edinburgh show? She is indeed. Oh, good. I'm so glad. I'm really excited to see her. I think she's a, yeah. an amazing stand up. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. I wonder if she can drive like me, a driver. Ooh, we'll have to ask. <laughs> I guess as a fellow driver, I could ask her. Please welcome potential driver, but definitely not a definite driver like me. It's Rachel, Rachel Fairburn. Please welcome to Trusty Hogs, Rachel Fairburn. Hello. Hi, how Thank are you. you? Thank you for having me. I've got my earphones on. Is that is that all right? Absolutely. You look yeah. like you're hosting a morning breakfast show, yeah. like a radio. I love, love it. it yeah. I, love, I love to have the earphones on. I think it, really? yeah, I like the sound. The idea of listening to my own voice is too traumatic. Well, it all sounds better in these to me. I'm like, oh, nice. oh I sound um, I sound like a creamy. Ooh. If that makes sense. <laughs> that does sound. Ooh, I don't sound so severe in these. I sound creamy. Creamy. I yeah. think I sound more like a sharp bitter lemon. I'm like, oh god, <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. tangy. Yeah, it's just like needs something to smooth it out. Yeah, it's a yeah. bit much. It's a bit much. How are you? I'm all right. I'm just sipping at an iced coffee, which I'm not sure I like or not. Um, okay. I will. We are. This is being. This is filmed, so I will address this. This looks disgusting. Have I got a sprained wrist? You have a sprained wrist. Oh no. A sprained no. Wrist. What happened? Well. By the way, can I, can we guess? Yeah, guess. Okay, because you feel to me like the kind of person who might have a bingo injury. A oh. bingo injury? Yeah. <laughs> but I can't tell if that's just your accent. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> Oh, well, I tell you, she's got a bingo injury. <laughs> Bloody hell. How would you injure yourself at bingo? Are you kidding? Out my way, I've got it first. Bingo! And then running? If, she, oh, if, if I'm running. Not, if I'm not falling in B&M bargains, I'm getting injuries at bloody bingo. <laughs> bloody terrible it is. Uh, I, well, do you have a guess? Um, I was just going to go for a very boring fall. Just a fall? Oh, she's had a fall. Oh. <laughs> That's so much worse. I was like, you're northern. Sorry, you're I, like, she's old. No, no. <laughs> Sorry, fell over then. Just fell over. No, not had a fall. Just we, fell over. We'd like, we'd like to welcome elderly northern comedian. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I, well, I'll tell you what happened. It, I, I'd had a drink. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, which is, you know, happens. Uh, it, we, are, we like a drink, don't Sometimes we? Sometimes we have a drink. And it was almost like, you know when... You suddenly get drunker than you've ever been and it's like a Tuesday afternoon and you're like, why? Day drinking is yes. dangerous. So I'd gone to stay with my boyfriend's parents and because it was a nice day, uh, sort of in the afternoon, my boyfriend went, oh, should we just nip to the pub? And I was like, oh, well, I've not really eaten yet, but yeah, let's go and I had a drink. Yeah. And then before I knew it, the next thing... Were I'm, the parents with you? His dad was with us. Oh my God. Lovely, lovely man. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Love him to pieces. Um, he wasn't drinking though. Oh my God. Uh, then he should have been taking care of you. Well, he disappeared by this point. He'd gone into the house at this point. Yeah. We'd gone back to the house. Okay. I think he decided, well, I'll leave them to it. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> not appropriate for me to be part of. Yeah. <laughs> and I, we were sat in the garden and I said to my boyfriend, yeah, I bet. I can wrestle you. No, 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 no. That's your go to daytime drinking. You're like, okay, I think I've had enough. I can wrestle you. There's there's not even a positive outcome there. So I can wrestle you actively. (laughs) I won't win, but I can wrestle you. I can do it, but I won't win. And he, I mean, I'm a small woman and he's about, uh, he's a six foot bloke. And he was like, well, I think. I think we've had enough drinks for the day. Yeah. And I said, come on. And then that, his, <laughs> no, his mum had come back by this point. And we were just trying to enjoy it. If you're not watching the video, we just saw like bear hands from Rachel. Like, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> uh, but at this point, his mum had come back and she was trying to enjoy the sunshine in the garden. And she was like... Uh, Without like WWF happening? Yeah, she was a bit like... Uh, okay. Isn't that the, the Wildlife Foundation? Oh, oh it's, it's wrestling as well. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, it might be WWE now, but it was WWF. Oh, World well, yeah, Wrestling yeah. Federation. Right. But it'd be great if WWF was like, you had to wrestle animals. Yeah. And yeah. They, kind of panda, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they live or you do. <laughs> Sorry, back to you so, and your wrestling. So his mom came out. Is she a nice, polite lady? She's lovely, okay. lovely. And she was just sort of going, all right, you two, that's enough. <laughs> he, he wasn't... <laughs> like you two five-year-old boys. 
noise. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't getting involved in this. May I stress? Yeah. Uh, so I went right. Come on. And then I sort of kicked my leg in the air. I don't know why, because oh that's, that's kickboxing, not wrestling. Yeah. And uh, as I did that, I lost my balance. <gasps> Bear in mind, he's nowhere near me at this point. He's gone, I'm <laughs> going over there uh, and sat down the chair. And, and as I did that, the next thing I, I realised, I was in a flower bed <gasps> and my arm was no. back. No. Um, so then I was like, phone an ambulance. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah. They were like, if you can feel no. pain when you're drunk, that's a bad yeah. sign. Mm. Like when you're that drunk and you can feel pain, that's not good. It hurt. So then, then I was like, well, it's bedtime. Went to bed, woke up in the morning and, uh, it felt like I had a false arm. <gasps> if this makes sense. Like it was all big and fat yeah. and swollen, but it didn't feel like my hand on my arm. Oh my gosh. It, it was like, Oh, this is weird. But, to keep my pride, and I had a gig in Nottingham as well, I was like... Oh um, two bad things in one day. I know, horrendous. <laughs> yeah. I was pretending that I was fine. I was like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it, it's fine. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and it, I, I've sort of I've self-treated it. Uh, it was oh, it's still a bit bruised now. Oh my goodness, yeah. I know, but it's getting better. It, it's still quite... I might have done some... I might mm -hmm. have done some damage, but I don't want to go to the Edinburgh Fringe and have to have a, a, a cast or something on it. No, but you, you have gone to a doctor or a hospital, right? No, I was gigging with... Well, oh, my God. Well, you're so northern. <laughs> well, no, I just went to Nottingham instead. I'll be all right. I'll just what? use my other hand for bingo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I uh, but I went... Uh, but, uh, I was on with... Yeah, have you met Kwame Asante? Yes, a great uh, who, comic. Great comic. And a doctor. And a doctor. So he... What? She's smart. What? She's smart. To be fair, I she's think smart. Was Kwame who diagnosed Helen Stye? Oh, yeah, this was it. Man. Yeah. <laughs> taking this all of us. Poor man. All of the comedians. Well, well, he was on before me, and I, so I got to the venue earlier, and I was watching his preview. Brilliant. I mean, if you go to Edinburgh, or you can see it wherever, he's so funny. Mm -hmm. Such a funny guy. Lovely man. So I thought, I'm going to ask him, because he was talking about treating people with fractures and stuff like yeah. that. And I was like, well, this is the guy for me. You know, he's good. <laughs> I'll just get it checked out. I was like, but he was in such a rush to go home, and he was like, oh, he's like, oh I'm ever so sorry. Um, I'd really like to stay and watch, but I'm getting married on Saturday. And, and I was like, I have to let. I can't be like, yeah, that's nice, but can you have a look at this, please? Wait. <laughs> so, so what you're saying it. is, you saw a doctor. You just didn't. You, you were you were you were in the company of a doctor. I, that didn't actually. I, I was ask in the vicinity, the but but my politeness uh, was like, oh well, Kwame obviously wants to go home. He's busy. Um, he's got a, a wedding coming up. He's so got. You've just brought up Kwame to tell us he's probably got a good show at Edinburgh. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my God, Rachel, it, go to a doctor. I didn't want to bother. Him. It'll be fine. It'll be all right. It's, it's just a, it's more sore at night. Anyway, we don't want to talk about me all the time. Let's yeah, move that, on. That's what? <laughs> that's literally the point of having you here. But I also genuinely feel like we need to get a doctor. Also, of all of the guesses that I had, even like my second and third were not wrestling. No. What were the, what were the flowers? What was in the flower bed? Uh, lovely flowers. They've yeah. got a lovely garden. Uh, <laughs> oh, nice. I mean, I couldn't... I'm, I mean, I'm no... Is it horticulture? I'm no horticulturalist. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't even say it. Uh, but uh, they're beautiful flower beds. Oh, lovely. Oh, oh you'd so love glad. them. Have you ruined any of them? Oh, just just in that one. Just that one mm -hmm. section. Yeah, okay, great. Did they one. feel bad? British people often feel bad for things that aren't their fault. Uh, did I... F did, like, did they feel bad that you'd injured yourself in their garden? Oh, yeah, his mum even was like, you must go to the doctors. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, promise. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You lied to your <sighs> boyfriend's mother? Yeah, only because. <laughs> I say, like, I haven't done that. I do that literally every time I've ever met a partner's parents. It's like, I am a lie. I am. A, I exist as a lie. <laughs> Hello, I'm a lovely person. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, um, I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> um, no, she was very good. Uh, uh, but I, I tell you what I got. I got some, um, It was. I was in Leeds on Saturday, and it was very, very painful, this. Uh, but I got some uh, gel that you put on it. Ibuprofen? Oh, it's heaven. Isn't it nice? I think I might be addicted. Isn't it nice? Ibuprofen it's gel? Oh, yes. Oh, you yeah. just put it right in your skin. Get Ooh. in there. Get you know in what? there. Wow. It, I mean, it does make your skin quite dry. Mm -hmm. But pop it on. It's really lovely. Do you reckon you have a whole bath of it? Um, it would have. Yeah. The, they only come in like tubes. We just get lots of tubes. Oh, can you imagine? Fill a bath, yeah. I think it, it takes Good. some time. A I'm tingly not sure that, bath that numbs yeah, you. Yeah, I'm not. It's gotta be a. <laughs> 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 mm. 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 I don't think that's. I think it would be quicker to drink gin. Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense? Mm -hmm, yeah. But then, of course, you have the same problem over. Again. So I guess we are where we are. What were you drinking? Well. Uh, again, you see, I'm not. I'm not much of a day drinker, and because because we're all so busy at the minute with, with comedy and, and Edinburgh comedy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm a very focused person, but I am easily led. So if somebody says to me, uh, "Do you want to go to the pub?" I'm like, "Yeah, I, yeah. I, I cannot. I can't say no." Um, but as I say, it was quite early in the afternoon, and because it's in the countryside where they live in Lincolnshire, it's beautiful. 
the lovely country pubs. So his dad drove us to this pub, and then, but you, see, this is the problem, right? I, yeah, I haven't answered your question. I'm making excuses. His dad, who I love to bits and I get on with very well, he doesn't drink now. Yeah. Uh, he he uh, he's very much an enabler, though. Yeah. So we'll go, have a drink. Would you like a glass of wine? Why don't you have a pint, Rachel? Yeah. We've got some wine in the fridge. Would you like some wine? I'm like, no, please, I don't want to drink. Yes, okay, I'll yeah. have a drink. Um, I think by about half past three, I added about four pints. <gasps> oh, pints wow. are not the one in the heat. Mm. No, no, no. But no. I do love beer. I know, it's tricky, isn't it? I, I love, love a cider beer. and they absolutely wipe me. Whoa. They wipe me. What do you drink? Um, a Guinness, normally. Like Do you not in the hot weather. Yeah, yeah. Not mm-hmm. in the hot weather. Cold Guinness in the hot weather. Do you know? Oh, it's like a mm-hmm. meal. I honestly thought you you would have gone for something lighter. Yeah? It's yeah. the earrings. It's the earrings. It's the earrings. But, but just your general demeanour as well. I imagine you'd be... Oh, I'd be like, oh, what, what's he going to have from the bar? I think you'd have maybe a spritzer. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, no, oh I, I can see you having a spritzer. I like yeah. to do that. Yeah. And also, th- what's that Aperol spritz? Oh, I love yeah. an Aperol Do you like spritz. it? I love it. I don't it. like it. But maybe it's because... The one time I've had it, uh, and this is going to sound really northern. Now, I live in Walthamstow, and I'm a member of my local, um, what they called, social club. Love uh, that. Orford House. It's very good. Amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry, and I was crazy for saying bingo. <laughs> it, okay. Well, exactly. <laughs> okay. And they and uh, they had the sort of, what they do is they, they do all sort of different events and stuff, but I really only joined to watch the football last year. Mm-hmm. Fair but enough. it's still very Fair good. Yeah. It's a good place. Yeah. And I went in and I said, oh, can I have one of these Aperol spritz? Thing. Is that how you say it? Because mm-hmm. it, it was on the menu. They'd put it on the menu, but I think yeah. they'd put it on as like, well, no one's going to order that. I think somebody who worked behind a bar probably went, oh, we've got to change this up a bit. We'll put this on. And I ordered it and uh, it, it arrived. And it, I, I, in my memory, it came in a mug, but it didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, a mug of Aperol spray. This is like, they, okay, so you're not sure that they'd made one before? No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, this looks nice. And as I took a sip, I went, Oh god! It's, it tasted like nail varnish remover smells, so I don't think it was. Oh no, that sounds right. Yeah, no, I think that's right. Yeah, but why yeah, no, that's why? they nailed it. Yeah, no, mm. that sounds gorgeous. Perfect. Literally. Yeah. 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 Why are you drinking this? Delicious. I'm not. You, you, you've just guessed I have why, spritzes. Why, oh. why, why do I assume that you would enjoy this? <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> odd. I don't know. I, I have quite a floaty demeanour. I think you do, especially with my my cardigans. Yeah, he see Andrew exclusively shops in charity shops and buys the. Clothes of dead old women, yeah. and so you assume like he would drink like sherry and spritzers and. I do yeah. like a good oh, sherry, sherry, actually. Yeah, yeah there nice. it is. There it is. It's good. I oh, can I d- see that. There's a, a thing called Montilla Morelos, which is like a sherry-like, but it's not from sherry, so they can't call it sherry. Have that over a, a vanilla ice cream. Gorgeous. Oh, no, gorgeous. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel's like, I'm like, no, thank you. Uh, I might do. I mean, I, I'm I'm just getting used to this iced coffee. Is it black? Is it just black coffee ice? Just black coffee, yeah. That's too intense. No, yeah. you, need, you need some sort of sweetener in that. Mm-hmm. No no sugar? No sugar, no. Oh, man. I don't have sugar in any. Hardcore. I'm a bit weird about sugar. I don't hardcore. like sugary, sugary things. Okay. Mm. Um, You are, I have a question for you. Oh, yes. An avid podcaster. You yes. have an amazing podcast, All Killing No Filler. Thank you very much. I have a question. Mm. Ooh, um, and you might be sick to death of this question. But why do you think people are so obsessed with true crime? Like, what in oh. particular? I, this thing that always fascinates me is like I have a theory on this. Uh-huh. But why do you think women love to listen to our own murderings? Because well, so this is a good question, and I do get asked this a lot. And I think the reason for this is right. So I, it, it's weird because true crime is not like a new phenomenon. Yeah, like it, it's for I mean for hundreds of years people have been obsessed with true crime. So if you yeah. think back to, you know, when people there was public executions and stuff. Yeah, people were obsessed with the crimes and you got the hangings and all that kind of stuff. And you know, in the Victorian days, people would read the Illustrated Police News and obsessed with Jack the Ripper and things like that. And and it's just and, and also women have al- always been. I remember hearing this fact when I was about fourteen that women are the biggest uh, consumers of true crime mm-hmm. uh, books. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's just changed, hasn't it? So it's like now we've got podcasts and, and stuff like that. Yeah. I think the reason we're obsessed with it is because 99% of the time, we're the ones being yep. murdered. Yep. And I think... And it's not it's not just listening to it from a point of view of... It's never from the gruesome point of view. I think it's from the point of view of, like, I can't believe that person did that. Or I can't, I can't believe someone could do that. Or... It, in a way, it's a bit like looking for a warning sign or seeing if you can 
identify somebody who mm. would do that, if that makes sense. That's interesting that you think it's about incredulity, because I feel like there's it, it's... I, f when I talk to people who are into it, it always feels like it comes with a presumption of inevitability. Mm. So it's less about like, uh, it's a, but, it, but it leads to the same conclusion, right? Of this like warning thing of like, how do we, it's like people think they can prevent it happening to them by listening to it, which yes. is odd. But also I just, I feel like, I wonder if we, if like the, if it, hmm, two things, if it numbs us, because I actually think women are interested in because of like an innate empathy. Yes, that's the other thing. Yes, mm. yes. But but I, then I also wonder if it has a numbing effect to like the kind of horrific facts that you hear on it. Yeah. I think so. So I um, I obviously I still listen to a lot of true crime, and but also there's been um I've seen a few tweets recently being a bit of a, a backlash kind of thing going. Mm. Oh, here's two uh two middle aged white women with a with a true crime podcast. Yeah. It's like, it's like okay, well, f first of all, that that's quite offensive because anyone can do a podcast about what they want, and it, 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 I've got problems with. I find the, pro the true crime podcasts that I find distasteful are usually men talking about crime. Interesting, yeah. and it's like because there's several I've had to turn off. Like, all right, lads, you're not you're not funny. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. not you're laughing at the wrong things. You. Mm. So, my what was my point? Oh yeah, so this was it. I, so when I'm listening to things, I often, and what we do on All Killer No Filler is we tend to talk about m more about the victims as well and talk about yeah. their lives which is why i think it, but that shouldn't be a distinct factor but it is a distinct exactly. factor exactly so you i think you have to you know it's very important to build a picture if you can because a lot of times with victims sometimes there's no information it's just like oh this woman works as a sex worker she was the eighth victim mm -hmm. and you have to try and find out as much as you can about these women to, to you know give people a, a picture of the fact that this was an actual person you know um and I just, I, I do feel there is a lot of, the thing that gives me the creeps is when podcasts just talk about the killer. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's in a way that is, I don't know how to do, it just feels distasteful. Mm. And I don't know, and, but you get, you know what, you know when you're listening to something that you go, mm, I don't like this. Yeah. This is making me feel weird. Anything that sort of venerates their intelligence or fetishizes yes. their violence like the yeah. whole Ted Bundy thing well exactly uh, right it, the perfect example it, of like I, I, I don't care if he was aesthetically pleasing like I, I can't stress that enough it, to you like it's insane but this is your thing the thing with Ted Bundy is he wasn't actually that good looking <laughs> <laughs> But he wasn't. He just he was like a seven, right? He, he, just, he just was. He's just not as ugly as most other murderers. Like, and also he wasn't as monstrous as we want to believe them. Do, do you think we need to believe? So you think there's a a, a, a lower standard for murderer? <laughs> That's why he murdered to make himself more attractive. Is that? <laughs> okay. Also, like I'm a, like like I'm a non-murdering seven, but a murdering ten. Yeah, oh, yeah. What? <laughs> also, this, this is the thing I always think about. So. Ted Bundy has popped into my head several times over the past week since I've had this on my arm. You know, because he used to pretend to have injuries to get uh, people to help him through his car. So he'd have, like, crutches and he'd have bandages yeah. on his arm and he'd approach people and go, approach women and say, oh, can you help me put this back in wow. my car? And because, you know, women are fundamentally good people. Yeah. They would go and help yeah. him. But, yeah, I keep, that's who I keep thinking of, Ted Bundy. Yikes. This is, you know, listening Yikes. to all this kind of Slippery stuff. Slippery slope. But, one. But, but I do think it's weird when, sort of, I watched the Zac Efron film about Ted Bundy and I thought it was massively inappropriate yeah mm -hmm. i haven't was, seen it but the ad even was like it's Whoa. really horrible yeah. like it i just didn't understand what the point of it was and it's i yeah. think i also i think i struggle with it only in the sense and i don't i like i love your podcast and oh, i okay. also i'm listening to i'm listening to teacher's pet and i think that is a really oh, yeah, good yeah, example yeah. of honoring the victim yeah <laughs> in such a specific way and 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 really inter uh, analyzes the failures of the police mm-hmm but one thing I do think is like, it shocks me that we have such a ubiquity of true crime podcasts and very few slash, I don't know of any, um, that doesn't mean that they don't exist, but analysis of the gender constructions that have led to that violence. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it feels like we're sort of like, well, we can't fix, fix the patriarchy, so get some popcorn, ladies, because this is going to happen, so yeah, we might yeah, as well yeah. make it fun. And you're <laughs> like, yeah, what? Yeah, that's, I don't know. See, see, the thing as well is, I think people think that, all right, I think men, for example, think women are listening to true crime podcasts because we enjoy it. It, it. It's not. It's weird. It's not like it's not gossip. It's yeah, and it, it's when you discuss it with people, it's always like, 
have you heard this? I can't believe that that happened. Yeah. Can you believe that somebody would do that? What the hell is that guy doing? Blah, blah, blah. And, and often, obviously, when women serial kill, it's usually with a man. Mm -hmm. It's very, very rare to get a woman who is like, do you know what I'm going to do? Be a serial killer. Yeah, they just don't have to get up and go. We just we are so lazy. <laughs> it's a real issue. We are so lazy. <laughs> and I think, I, I don't know, I just feel, it's quite a, a weird thing. It, I, when I, so when I listen to, to True Crime now, so I was listening to something, and it, it, it still affects me, and it still bothers me. Like, I still turn things off quite a lot, and I go, oh, God, I can't be... Yeah, same. Not, I can't be doing this. So, like, I was listening to a podcast the other day about... Oh, it's, it's Honestly, it's one of the worst things I've, I've ever listened to, to the point of it takes a lot to make me go, like, feel physically sick. Mm -hmm. And it was about, sort of in the early 80s, I think it was about, in 1980, it was a guy, it was, it was a McDonald's massacre, and he just went into a McDonald's and, and started... Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's honestly one of the most horrific things I have ever listened to, to the point of I had to turn it off like 10 minutes in. And I was like, this is making me feel physically sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, I'll carry on and listen to the rest. I was like, oh, well, I've got to see it through, whatever now. Yeah. And at the end of it, I was like, I feel really depressed. It, yeah. it, yeah. it really brought me down. Yeah. And I, because and I, I was just like, that happened in 1980 and it's still happening. Like yeah. nothing's changing. Yeah. You know, the, these things are still occurring. I do think that's the thing. If you listen to a lot of true crime, you have to, like, cleanse your brain a little bit, which is to say that, like, it's really easy to listen to those stories and not realise that they are making... They make me terrified to go out in the world. Yes. And and that's not a way to live either. Like, you can be factually aware of the world you live in and also still need to function within it. Yes, yes, yes. One thing I do like that you guys do is that... I think the thing that makes me turn off true crime podcasts, if I'm honest, is, like... This horrific story of the death of a young, vulnerable woman. Would you like to buy this mattress? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's <laughs> what kills me. Or like, <laughs> yes, we've been trying this hair product. And I'm like, no, you can't make money off the death. Like, you mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. can make money off your podcast, but like, you can't jump from one to the other. Like, that's just Use normal. Use code RIP10 <laughs> yeah. for 10% off. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's so jarring. And this is, so we don't have adverts. I and, know, and that's what I love. So, so then, then sometimes I think, if I mean, we probably never have adverts. Very highly unlikely that we have, have adverts. Patreon. We have a Patreon. That's yeah. like, that's way too. Um, but we don't do any extra for Patreon. So it's like if you want to donate, you can donate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever. It just you know covers the cost and everything. But with adverts, and, and I totally agree with you. So sometimes when you listen to something, it's like, and she became the fifth victim. Hey, have you heard about uh, AG uh, Home Security? Yeah, it's oh, like, that's, oh, what, oh yeah. that's what it is. It's the cynicism with which they put things like mm. the security y things on there. So yeah, yeah, when you're worried and you're like, yeah. oh, God, oh, God. This. Yeah. So I think as well, like with, with adverts, I think if you are doing a true crime podcast, you should have some sort of social responsibility because think about what you're talking about. If you do have adverts, I do think you should donate a percentage Obviously. of that income to a charity that has something to do with, you know, what what I you're agree. talking about and it's it's bizarre because i mean it's a huge podcast my favorite murder mm -hmm. sort of they i i never listened to it and they i think what's happened with them from what i can ascertain is i think they went a bit like give us your money and they started bringing out merchandise and this i mean don't get wrong we've got merch but it's, yeah you know it's not like it's not like knives with blood on them or anything. It's pictures Jesus. of me and Kiri and, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. 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 <laughs> In-jokes from the podcast and, yeah. and a mug, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. But I think what happened with them is that they started to bring out loads of merch and they started to, you know, the tone of the podcast started to sort of... They were getting, like, victims' names wrong and, and, and saying mm -hmm. inappropriate jokes, which is why I think that a lot of people sort of were like, ah, I feel quite uncomfortable about this whole thing now yeah. and, and sort of... I haven't yeah. listened to it, so I don't know. I did yeah, try to listen to an episode, and it felt um, gossipy. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm also very reticent to use that word about two women on a podcast because it feels Wish gendered, yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. Like, so it's <laughs> like I know, like that's how people. I, what I, is she like? I'm northern and like bingo. Women gossip. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> else. I am a trash bag. Uh, but yeah, so I. Sh should we start on the Irish? Should we do that? <laughs> Oh yeah, well while Helen's not here, I can go in and about the famine and stuff. I know, what she, is she it? I don't know. She does it Who every knows? time, every time. I do, I do know. <laughs> and then, but then also we got free flapjacks, and she's like, "Don't eat them till I get there, and I'll dole them out." And I'm like, "Well, which is it?" <laughs> like, do you know I, what? That was a really good. Flapjack. Thank you, thank you. Mm. Oh no, I genuinely really have a very good Helen. Helen. Yeah, like great. I'm very good at it. Really yeah, no, really thank you so good. much. Thank you. Um, is your Kiri any good? 
I can't do it, no. Oh, interesting. It's funny you should say this, though, because I... Um, Loads of people always do my accent. I, you might get this as well. Yeah. You do your accent back at you. And you're like, yep. Right, okay. But I've never seen or I've never heard anyone do a good impression of me. About, about from <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend the other day did a really insulting impression of me. It's probably the best impression nice. I've ever heard. So we were just chatting in the car and he said, uh, I said, to, you know, he'll go, oh, he said, <laughs> and I was like, that's, it's that's really on. funny, actually. <laughs> that it is made you sound good. like a Gallagher cross with a goblin. That's, that that's so to really... be honest, that is pretty much that's it, isn't that... it? That's... <laughs> Can I pop that on my post? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you write reviews. That's great. Um, please tell us, what is your show about at the Fringe? Well, it's called Can I Be Awful? Yes. And so basically, when I, I'm going to slag someone off on WhatsApp. Sure. Mm-hmm. So it's about boundaries, really. I What I do is I send my friends the phrase, can I be awful? Oh, so you think that's like a way of respecting their boundaries? Yeah. and it's What ba- a great way to make bitching sound like about consent and respectable. <laughs> there you Love go. Love that. Thank Love you. Because what annoys me is nobody, I always feel like nobody respects my boundaries. And, I, and I've got this whole thing about, I'm sure it's because I'm a working class woman. I, I'm sure that's why no one respects my boundaries, that people will just say things to me. Or, or you know, do my do an accent back to my face yeah. or, you know, assume i got a bingo. Yeah. You know, all that kind of that's stuff. That's based entirely <laughs> on your personality, <laughs> to be clear. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's it's like that kind of stuff. But I, it's, um, I mean, to be honest, like, it's, it's, it's almost finished. It, it, time's running out, but it should be fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when yeah. you say so, when you say "Can I be awful?" You're checking in if the other person has the space for that. Yeah. So I say, "Can I be awful?" I love that. And mm-hmm. sometimes c- my friends will say yes, uh, or always, or um, it's a bit early. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll try. I'll try it later on. That's amazing. I like like you it's formatted too early. it. Oh, Go I was on. gonna say you formatted it like an '80s game show, like. Uh, like catchphrase, like, can I be awful? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See what the audience says. Hey guys, can I be it's awful? It's a bit early. <laughs> <laughs> but I oh, want to know: it's... is it a bit early in the day, or is it a bit early in how in the in your length of time knowing the person oh, you're about to it, be awful about? So this is the thing: in the day, <laughs> you don't because, have enough information. <laughs> listen, I'm an early riser, oh. so I, I get up. I mean, regardless of what time I've gone to bed, or if I've uh, had a big night out or whatever, I will be up at seven. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Wow. I'll be up. Why? And ready to bitch. Why? Because re- I don't know. I'm just I'm just like that. I, I'll get up at seven and I'll do some stuff. And then I might... I'm a bit like, you know, you know in the medieval times when they had different sleep patterns. So they'd go to bed at like seven and then they'd get up at two in the morning and potter about for a bit and then they'd go back to bed. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm a bit like that, but the other way around. So I'll get up at seven, do bits and bobs, and I might nod off for another half hour. But I'm up for the day then. I'm up and about. Fascinating. Yeah. It's like my grandmother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's well, disgusted I'm a bit... me more than any true crime fact I've ever really? heard. That's really... <laughs> wow. That should have a trigger warning. But, you know, that's <laughs> interesting because I um, was more or less brought up by my grandparents. Uh, and mm. they... So I think this is probably... Mm. They were... Right. Early. That's some old people shit. Yeah, it's, mm. this is like this is what they used to do. Yeah. You know? they'd, they'd be up at like half past five in the morning yeah. mm. doing stuff. Do you start your day with a cigarette? I don't smoke anymore, really. Oh, okay. I used to, though. Yeah. But I, I, I'm on and off smoking now. Good for you. Makes me feel a bit sick now. Good for you. Yeah. Nice. We love to hear it. Mm. You it's don't perfect. smoke, do you? Not, no. Not, no. And you, you're not smoking. No. no. I'm good. scared my mother will listen to this. I used to. I don't anymore. <laughs> That's good. I don't That's anymore. Very good. Yeah. I, now yeah. also makes me feel sick. Do you know, with me, it's it's if I get incredible, if someone really pisses me off, Mm. That's when I get a craving. Rage. Yeah, I agree. So, because it, in a way, slows down your breathing. I mean, obviously, long term also, but don't well, you find yeah. it like it, it makes you like it's sort of mindful? It sort of, if some, yeah, it's that thing of like, I remember I'd quit smoking when I, when I used to work at um, a library. I used to work, I had this awful boss who was the biggest knobhead in the world. <laughs> and I'd quit smoking. Sorry, you used to work at a library. I did. Okay. used to work in a library. Um, and I had stopped smoking for about three years. Yeah. And one day she really was an arsehole mm. with me. Um, how can you be an arsehole when you were on a library? Like, if you can't even raise your voice, how do you be mean? Well, we had offices, didn't we? Oh, of course. Uh, right. So I, I, I rem- it, it, the argument, I can't remember what it was about, but she was very rude to me. And I remember, the, the only thing I remember saying to her was, oh yeah, what's this in here? Downton Abbey. Because <laughs> 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 I felt she was... What? <laughs> well, I thought she was like throwing her, like she was sort of <laughs> thinking she was above me. And I felt like... 
oh, what am I? Mrs. You know, below stairs. What's this? Down St. Abbey. And I remember, I remember storming out. I mean, it was a rare, bo- <laughs> it was, it was a rare books library as well, and it was in this big, beautiful old Gothic building. So to storm out, though, like, <laughs> well, what? well, to storm out, you had to, you had to storm out. But then, because her office was up on this turret, you had to. <laughs> oh, so it was upstairs downstairs. Yes, yeah, so it was very much upstairs downstairs. <laughs> but, but, but I had to storm down a spiral staircase, which is really hard to do. Like, be pissed off, like going. Oh, fuck me, oh, my oh my god, god that's sh- so sh- funny! And then storm through this beautiful old building. So anyway, it pissed me off that much that after not smoking for three years and never wanting to smoke again, I went to the shop and bought twenty Marlboro Lights and nice. just stood outside, yeah, smoking them. And you I showed her. I tell you what, I showed her. <laughs> you really actively did. damaged your own health. <laughs> actually, <laughs> <damaged> <laughs> <my> own health. <laughs> oh man, that's really funny. <laughs> Oh my goodness, well, listen, I think in Edinburgh, people will willfully have sought out comedy as their holiday. What legends? Yes. Mm-hmm. They'll want to see comedy. They'll want to have a good time. Legends. Yeah. I think your show's going to be amazing. Where can people see it? So, The Hive at Monkey Barrel, 1740, every day. Six gorgeous time. No day off. Mm. No day off? No day off. Rachel! Listen, wow. if you, listen I'm putting a working into working class, man. <laughs> <laughs> days off. I, uh, really well, making I, the rest of us feel bad. Even for a bingo no. break? <laughs> Uh, the show is cancelled due to a bingo injury. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I, I just, I just don't see the point. I always lose momentum, and, and like, I hear you. you. You've got obsessive compulsive disorder. Yes, I have obsessive compulsive disorder. I didn't realise. Yeah. So I once again, it's like once I get into a routine as well. When I'm in Edinburgh, that is where my OCD really comes into its own. Oh yeah. So I'll have, you know, I'll eat the same thing for breakfast. I'll eat the same thing before my show. Uh, if I I'll, don't have a protein bar or a cereal bar at the exact number of minutes before my show, like I did the first time, it went well. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, M is teching me. FYI, <laughs> that'll be oh, the death. Yeah, that just FYI. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Do everything the same, please. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, if I know if I have a day off, that will ruin my. Interesting, but I'm, I have the same. Like maybe like you will have up until the show time. I'll do exactly the same thing, and then after the show is a time where it's like I can relax a bit yeah, more. Same. So. That's why I'm so excited. It's my earliest show ever, three twenty, and I'm oh. like, oh, you mean I can, I can stop with the rules and the rigidity at five? Yeah, yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. That, so the previous years, my show was at twenty to ten. <gasps> oh my god, that's a long day wow. to be going around. That that was, a, and I could never relax. I couldn't no. do anything. I was going to the gym really early. I was going to the gym at this class at about um, eight in the morning. You all get the up time. at seven. You couldn't. Yeah, of course. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then by the time I'd finish a show. It, by the time you've you know sorted everything out, got changed and everything, it's 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 eleven at night. You get no. to meet your friends and they're all hammered and you're like, oh, I just, I, I'm no. going, I'm just going mm. to bed. Yeah, because otherwise <laughs> you'll end up wrestling someone. It's <laughs> just not right. <laughs> Please go watch Rachel. She's gonna be amazing. Tell me where can they find you on uh, in, on the internet? Oh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, just the well, who's going on Facebook now? Nobody. Nobody. Uh, Nobody. My Are... dad, my dad's recently joined it. Facebook is over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Bless. twenty years just after it's joined. been. He's just joined, yeah. Well, he must think it's so problematic. Well, it's it's very sweet because all he does is he just I'll post something and he just shares it to his <gasps> own. Oh, I know it's really sweet. Oh, isn't it's really it? adorable. It's, so it's really sweet. sweet. That's so sweet. Well, um, thank you so much for doing this. And where can people listen to your podcast? Oh, it's on all the podcast places, isn't it? You just Google it. All killer, no filler. Wherever you listen to your podcast, it'll be there. Amazing. I listen to mine on Spotify. Oh, look, you listen to your own? Oh, God, I never listen no, to okay, my God. own. No, okay, God. Bloody hell. No. Thank you so absolutely. much for doing it. Yeah, thank Our you. Our latest talk, everybody. Rachel Fairburn. We got so excited talking to Rachel, we forgot to solve a problem. Yes, I know. We, we, she's so good. She's fantastic. She's really, really good. She's also does that thing that, um, like, I, I, I said it to her face, so it's fine, but other elderly women do, where she, like, speaks in a tone where you lean in. Mm. You're like, oh, my God. So we have to... I was going to say, when I edit, edit the TikToks of us, because it's in format, yeah. like that format, I've got to cut to you. Uh, you're always looking at the guests, and, it, oh. and it's like it's, I don't think it's very engaging. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, oh, come on, guys, project outwards. But then I'm sat here with Rachel, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, no, don't apologise. Shady way to tell me that for the first time, no, no, Andrew. But, wow, you could have mentioned it before. But it could make a difference because <laughs> our TikTok views are through the roof. Oh my god, we love to hear it. Yeah. We love to Actually, what if that's a, that's even more insulting? It's like no, actually. The People prefer are, you from they mine. They prefer you from mine. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's do this problem. Mm. This is from C. 
Hello, Hi, C. C. Um, to start, I just want to say I love the podcast. I think Hi, you're very funny C. and definitely don't talk too fast. And I've even managed to get tickets to see Helen at the French this year. <gasps> Cute! There are also tickets available for Andrew and I. We're both performing too. <laughs> yes, we are. We are available for ticket purchasing. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, I've been living with my flatmate for a few years now. We met at uni and we have been really close ever since. Okay. This summer, we're both graduating and planning to stay in the same city. I've managed to get a grad job, but she's still looking for something and isn't having much luck. Today, her mum told her that if she doesn't find a job, then her mum will be will stop helping her out with money, meaning that she won't be able to afford rent for a flat. She's struggling to find something and has said she might want to move, might have to move home for a bit while she looks. I really want to live with her, but also I'm keen to find a new flat so that I'm settled in time for my new job. Uh, And just so I have one less thing to stress about. Mm. I've also done 90 percent of the flat search so far. I don't want to start looking for other options, but also don't want to be stuck looking for something last minute. Uh, Right now, my plan of action is to just wait and see what happens, but I also can't help but think she won't find something and I'll be left stranded. Any advice from C? Goodness. uh, You know what? A lot of my friends are at that sort of age. um, And indeed myself, I'm looking at London. And that's quite a common issue. I think so too. Coordinating people like that. I think it's really tricky. And I actually think you're coming from a really lovely place, which is like best case. And I, I think... I think you need to just express what you've said to your friend because actually what you're saying is lovely. It's, I want, first choice, you. You're my pick. I also hope you find a job that you want and love. I also have empathy for you and your situation. But I think what would be useful is decide for yourself before you speak to your friend what your reasonable deadline is for finding a place without her. Mm -hmm. What time, which time will you need for that? And then tell her that you have to make, you have to know... If she doesn't know what she's doing by then, you'll have to look for an alternative because then she has warning mm. and you've given like as much reasonable time and space as you can. But I think it it sadly sounds like you might have to make that decision soon. Yeah, I definitely agree with, with talking to her. I think that's going to... I think she'll express... I feel like she's holding something back, the friend that's not... That's like, oh, I might have to move back in with my parents. Like, like a move like that, you should be really enthusiastic and like keen and... yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like maybe if you not confront because it's not it doesn't have to be that dramatic. But if you just say those things that like Catherine said, I think you might find that she'll be like, I'm I'm not ready. I'm going to move back home for a bit. Yeah. Or actually, like, it's already very stressful trying to find a job. I feel like I'm failing. I yeah. have this messaging from my mom, which is totally well intentioned, but probably is also making me feel like less of an adult. Mm-hmm. The stress of this on top of it's probably making her feel in a way, you might actually be gifting her a bit of relief by yeah, saying, you know what, definitely. I have other options. It's quite pressurized to be like, this person needs to f- needs me to find a place to mm-hmm. live on top of I also need to find a job on top of I'm disappointing my mom. So actually, I think open, honest, empathetic conversation would be the best course of action. And also like, don't forget in that conversation to celebrate the uh, how special it is to have found a roommate you want to continue living with after yeah. any period of time. You must be really good friends. Living apart is not going to change that. No, for sure, definitely. And um, you know, maybe maybe it's a couple months down the line or a year down the line that <gasps> they fall in love. <laughs> they fall in love. Yeah. I was yeah. See? She's going to be your wife. I don't know if you're straight or gay, but And um, then you don't need to find a two bed. You can just find them. Oh my bed. god, gorgeous. <laughs> I think especially if you're kind of, I, I don't know, I think we have similar predispositions to just be like, oh, well, your happiness is very important, so I must prioritise your happiness. Yeah. So if that if your housemate that you're moving in with has those thoughts, then they don't want to abandon you. So they, yeah, yeah. They, won't, they won't articulate that actually it's very stressful. So yeah. you should open that door for them. Yeah, and also you probably are trying to take care of her happiness, but also, you know, you have to enter a new job feeling mm-hmm. grounded and like you have a home that feels stable and... It's a lot to do all at once. So it's okay. These things happen. Change is scary. I know it's, but usually, usually it is good. Mm -hmm. I think if anything, it just means when you hang out, it's going to be much more celebratory and fun and of an an event like, and you'll, you'll, it's, you sound like a great housemate and so does she. You'll you'll be chill with whoever you move in with. No doubt. And hey, in a year's time, which flies by. You can just it really live together does. then. I cannot believe it's the fringe. Like it's no very alarming. You made this about the fringe that fast. Sorry, I, but wow, that's, wow. It's scary. He's trying to. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, that's yeah. crazy. No, I know. Wow. I appreciate. It. Wow. Tickets available now. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> no. No. It is crazy that you haven't got tickets for Andrew and I. Um, well, so you uh, actually have a lot of admin to do. You need to find a place. You need to book tickets for my show for Andrew's show. Mm. I say, get that chat out the way, my friend. Because I'm house hunting at the moment with my current housemates. See, so um, he doesn't want to live with you. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't That's not what he said. Okay. Well, they want well, to live with the person they're living with. Well, okay. Well, if uh, the options there, me and Sam, <laughs> very lovely. We're very tidy. Sam makes lovely cakes. Ooh. Um, yeah, although nice. he didn't he didn't make give me any of the last cake he made. Wow. He, he ate it all by himself? No, he made it for somebody else. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> that seems reasonable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have a lovely day, C, and have your chat and don't yes. feel bad about it. You're probably gifting you both of you with some useful relief. Yeah. And if you're missing Helen's insight, move to Germany. Later. Oh yeah. yeah. Move to Germany. Mm -hmm. There we go. I hope you solved your problem. They're good. <laughs>